tonight on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Joe sits down with Connecticut native the What Up Funk Band. And straight off the release of their latest CD, So Funkful, the What Up Funk Band performs live with The Upper Room. Now here's your host, Joe Kelly. Hi, I'm Joe Kelly and welcome to The Upper Room. The What Up Funk Band is one of the top bands here in Connecticut. Blending funky bass lines, melodic keys, tight horns, great rock guitar solos, and soulful vocals, they bring a unique sound and excellent showmanship. They shared the stage with such greats as Tower of Power and played legendary venues as Toad's Place. Tonight they're here to discuss their latest CD, Soul Funk Full. Please welcome to the upper room, the What Up Funk Band. Welcome, good friends. What up, Funk thank Band? You, thank you. Yeah, so everybody's here, and it's a great seven piece band. And let's give a little mm -hmm. introduction on how What Up Funk got together. And I guess we'll start with the man right here, Kevin Franklin. Take, it, take us to the yeah. beginnings of the band. Basically, it was uh, me, Tommy, and Jamie kicking it. And we put some other members in Anthony, uh, Hubert, and Nick, and Dave was the. Uh, Last guy. Last guy's come in. The project we've been working on for a while. And there's so. an interesting story that uh, how you came into contact with Anthony, and he became lead vocalist. And, and how did that happen? We played a, a club in New York called Armonk's Crossing. Yeah, Armonk, New York. Everybody said you should get Anthony. He works here. He sings really good. You should have him jam. Uh huh. So and of like, course we're like, we're like oh, okay, send, send him up us. here. Let's see. And he came up and he jammed and we were like, hmm, you're hired. Oh, we hired right. him on the spot, basically. He was like yeah, the next funny week. Because I, 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 I went to get a drink and I said, man, I want to go talk to this guy, Anthony. I couldn't find him. And of course, the other two guys at Aura were like, hey, you want to be with us? You want to play with us? Yeah, but he, he had to schedule his tables before he could uh, really yeah. have <laughs> a couple of dinners to be served. Yeah, the owner was a little lenient that day, so he let uh -huh. me have some fun. So, so after you got the, the invitation to join the band? They put you through the paces? When I first joined the band, I was just singing a lot, just basically fronting the band. And then we started to work in my guitar more. And as it got a little more serious and we saw the response that Connecticut and surrounding areas, even some places down in New York, um, became more of a, uh, we realized it could be something special about the band rather than just having fun in a bar. Right. And you guys have stayed together for, how, how long has it been total? Twelve years. Twelve years. Wow. And and that's that's obviously rare in this business, right? Yeah. 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 Definitely. What, what what's the glue that holds you guys together and having fun? I always say a band is kind of like anything else that is worthwhile. You have to work at it, and you know we kind of work at it, and we have dis differences like everybody else, but you know it always gets squashed in the end, and well, it's all about making music. And we have a good yeah, time. I guess a lot of it's based around original stuff. Okay. We yeah. get tired of doing local scene with the with the cover music. We do our own stuff and that keeps us we have projects going, recording projects and other things that keep us motivated and keep on going in the right direction. Right. So we, we should also talk with uh the band and I, I wanna go around and talk to everybody about their early experiences getting into music and uh taking it to the day where we're gonna jam up in the upper room. Uh, I'm going to start with drummer Jamie Sapelli. So, so how, how did you uh, get into playing drums? Or, or was that your first instrument? Uh, my first and only. Mm -hmm. That was it. Uh, just a little kid. My uncle played drums. He gave me the sticks and the little record, and I started playing. And uh, down in the basement, looking in the mirror, jamming away, playing the pots and pans, right. saving up for that first Blue Pearl Swirl set, <laughs> and then uh, and started wrecking them. <laughs> I started destroying drum sets. That was a thing for a while. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wrecked a few with this with right. this band. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you toured in a lot of different uh, kinds of music. I did a lot of touring yeah. all over the place. Uh, down a lot of Texas, a lot of Florida, mostly out of Chicago, mm -hmm. through the Midwest, and I was playing rock, a lot of different things. But when I ran into these guys, and then Anthony came along, and we really started putting the original pieces together right. and where the tempos actually mattered and there was no fooling around within a couple of years it got pretty damn good so that's uh jamie sapelli and now we're going to talk with dave savitsky 
saxophonist who who's plays in a lot of different projects and bringing the, the funky sax. Well, what kind of sax are you going to play with tonight? Uh, it's, a, it's a silver, silver Mark VI. Okay. Which I've had, um, had about six years now. Okay. Um, I, I was doing, I, I still do a lot of jazz gigs. I was playing all around uh, Fairfield County a lot when Kevin called me like four or five years ago. And it was like a cold call out of nowhere. And uh, I, I, I really haven't, hadn't ever seen the band before. And um, he's like, why don't you come down and sit in with us, you know? <laughs> Rude awakening. <laughs> I came down and sat in with the, with the band at uh, Black Rock and Blue in Fairfield. And oh, yeah, uh, right. those guys like hung me out for like 50 choruses on this <laughs> I was just like playing and playing and playing and playing. It was like a 10 minute solo, like the longest solo I ever had to play with this band ever. It was the first time I ever played this band. But I, I got the gig, and uh, it, we, we've been doing. I do a lot of work with this group, and you know, try to fill in the other nights with other bands. And, and there's some great know. horns on, on this album. Thank uh, you. So funkful, so you'd be commended as well Thanks. as the rest of the band. So the man who's got the one of the most unique styles of playing, the percussion, <laughs> and, and great player, and great great showman, Mr. Hubert Martin. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Where very where, much. where did uh, your origins origins into music? Uh, oh, for you. mostly actually it's from the from the jazz, from the jazz field. I was, a, I was a nut for for my jazz albums when I was a kid, and I was always listening to my jazz all the time. And, and um, I used to play play to, to play to my jazz albums mostly in my room, and I and I learned different rhythms from playing playing off my um, off my albums and stuff. So when one time I finally I was invited down to this uh, the Houston Community <coughs> College. And uh, I met Mr. Sonny Costanzo and Michael Ladon and a few guys, you know, they, they had this band called the Air Band. And um, he said, yo, would you, know, would you like to come down and sit in and play? Would you like to, you know, to come down and play? I never even thought, I never paid them with, you know, even thought to be like a, a, a actual, you know, you know, out playing musician or anything. But I just loved to play. Well, when we, when he's, when he, when he sat in with him, I sat in with the guys and uh, it was just on. It just, it was so great. The, the feeling, the rush, the rush I got from actually doing it with a, with a, with a, with a bunch of guys kicking the, the, this type of music, this, this live funk, this funk and dance and, and you know, and energy, uh, energy J music it, it is, you know, I love it. I love so, it. So I, I noticed there's a little bit of a Latin influence on, on yeah, some of the I, songs, Say La Soul, were you, were you heavily involved in, in that one? Bring, oh yeah. Bringing that in there. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I'm heavily involved in everything we do. Right. I love, I love the music. I, I love our, our um, I really, really, really like our originals a lot. Uh, this is def this is one of the one of the few bands that I've ever that I've been with that uh, where our originals are are very very uh, liked by a lot of people. Like it, people don't act actually do like this and like that. Too, too, they they get into our they really get into our, right. our originals. And I like that. It's a great feeling. All right, Nick DePala, bassist, and and when did you join the band? Because I know you weren't the original bassist, but what was your, your introduction into what a fun? I think going out. This this is gonna be four years now. Like four years. This yeah. will be four years. Four years. Okay. Wow. I've been you know in various other bands projects, but <coughs> never actually played as much as I out live as much as with this band in a long time. So I took a little hiatus, but. So, so what was the uh, introduction with the band, the audition? Basically, my father beat me on the head with a tenor sax. That's how I started playing. And that's how <laughs> it when started, I was about yeah. five. Because you so come from a jazz background, right? Your yeah, family, he, my uh, father right. was a, a tenor player and a music teacher. Mm -hmm. The whole family played, so <clears throat> I was bound to do this. You played the saxophone too? No, trumpet. He made trumpet. me play trumpet. Okay. Because there was already a sax man in the family, so right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. wanted us to all play different instruments. But uh, right. <laughs> I think I, I auditioned uh, Captain's Cove for this band, and uh, yeah. I remember Kevin called me back like two. I was waiting for the call. And he said, uh, "Yeah, we like you a lot, but uh, you know, we want you, we want you to sing." <laughs> and I said, um, "I can't. I don't I really. You guys sing great. I'm gonna sound pretty bad if I." <laughs> yeah, we took him anyway. You guys will pick, pick the other guy that can sing better than me because I think it was down to two bass players. And yeah, it was two bass players. Okay. Right. And, um, but the I word was Nick could sing, though. That was, that was the word. That, yeah. Well, the UConn destroyed that for me. I lost my voice and 
at the He's still working on singing. He's going to yeah. get it in there. Someday, yeah. someday I'll blurt out a few notes. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Nick says, you know, blurt is the key. Less, <laughs> less is more than none is the best. So that's, right. that's how he goes. That's the so there won't be a mic tonight on you. Oh, no. No, just grooving on not, the bass. Not in the yeah. near future until they force me. <laughs> <laughs> so our keyboardist and vocals and, you know, Ray Rhyme on in the band. Tommy Adams. Tommy Adams. Yeah, sure. Tommy Adams. So, <laughs> did you start with, with the keys? Um, yeah, I, I kind of similar situation like Nick. Um, uh, my dad was a musician, and um, it's funny how I picked up keys. You know, when you're a little kid, your mom drags you around. So one night, one day, she actually brought me to a friend's house, um, one of her friends, and you know, I'm sitting around there twiddling my thumbs, and she goes, "Oh, there's an organ downstairs in the basement." So I went downstairs, like seven years old, and I played this organ, and they, I guess I just disappeared from their sight, so they were so happy. And then my mother came downstairs and got me. <coughs> of course, she let my father know. About a week later, I come home on a Saturday morning from outside playing basketball and stuff, and there's an organ in the living room. So um, that's, that's pretty much how I got started, you know, because I, I wanted to play it, and he knew I wanted to play it, and he was a musician, so of course, you know, it's like my son wants to play. So yeah, how I got started. And, and you do your own music. Yeah, as yeah, well. I yeah. do. I do some stuff. I'm actually, um, actually, you've, you've heard um, mm -hmm. some of the stuff off my first CD. I'm working on a second CD, but um, that's a little more jazz, jazz influence. This next, next CD is kind of going in a different direction, like a little jazz electronica kind of thing. So, yeah. So Anthony Gattalita. The yes. quarterback of the band. That's right, because he'll, you know, we're we'll watching in the sound checks, and he'll he'll give all the cues to the band and make sure everything's put together. So, how did you get into playing the guitar and and, and singing it? Well, mostly with the guitar. Um, I had an uncle who kind of fooled around with guitar. He had this big amphiphone acoustic guitar, like a big Mexican guitar, and he used to let me just strum strings on it. And then um, MTV came around. <laughs> and uh, once MTV came around, I just couldn't believe all these things that were going on with music on TV. I said, wow, maybe I could do that one day. So me and my brother, very similar to Jamie, we got like this box and pots and pans band. And we started in my cellar and my dad made little lights and we used to shut up all the lights <laughs> in the cellar and turn on the lights. And all the family functions, people would come downstairs and we'd pretend we'd play. And that grew into a musical career. I went to school in um, Syracuse, New York at a community college and developed there and started to tour around with a, with a funk band that had a horn section. Um, really good, raw, talented band, but we just played everything super fast. Now when I listen back, it's just like the tempos just go off the meter. And we toured around Canada, and I um, left my hometown of Syracuse and moved to uh, Purchase, New York, where I studied classical guitar. And uh, didn't really use my voice, but I did make more of a career singing than I did playing guitar. I noticed that people would always just take right to my singing, maybe because there was a lot of guitar players out there. And I bumped into these guys in Armour because I was taking tables to pay for school, I was going to music school, and uh, ever since then it's been a whirlwind of funk and entertainment and a lot of things I don't think I could say on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for, for uh, putting the brakes on, right? right. <laughs> but we're going to have some fun jamming oh, in, yeah. in the studio Guaranteed, over here. Guaranteed, right? Yeah. So my uh, next guy I want to talk to right here, who's the leader of a, a known band back in the day, the Frankadelics. That's <laughs> Someone right. known. Someone, Someone known. <laughs> Infamous. <laughs> Infamous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Franklin, who's also, uh, I guess you're the, you're the business manager of the band and putting it all yeah. together. And he works hard, too. I've seen yeah. him in action. And, and Kevin's, of course, a uh, guitarist and, and player. I lo love that guitar I, I saw you had there, the, uh, the Paisley guitar. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. So you have two guitarists on here, and uh, how, how do you guys work it together? To Actually, not step on each other. We don't really think so much about no, it. That's just let it flow? Yeah, we just let it flow. Yeah, it's not stiff at all. Like, there's basic theory behind playing it. Well, if he's in one position, I'm in the other position, and we don't try to complicate it too much. Right. Right. So you, you grew up in, in Connecticut as well, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, I grew up in Connecticut, right. Bridgeport area. Right. So, so you know, you're still working on some new material. I know Anthony was saying. You've been yeah, we, it's kind of hard. New music out with the crowd. Yeah, well, we're, we're first trying to get it together. We fooled around with this blues that I uh, kind of been shooting around in my head a couple of weeks ago. And 
you have to keep on pushing your original stuff and also keep writing even after all the all the the work that we put into so funkful and and how the guys really helped form the idea with me um you have to keep you know you can't just say okay we did so funkful and let's give up for a little while because for a while i didn't have like the uh facility to want to write any music and uh, now it's coming back again. You know, you take a little time off, and you, and then you say, "Hey, there's a couple of hooks I got in my head right. going around." And I've never been with a with a with a band. You know, there's a lot of talented guys out there, but I've never seen a band be able to interpret a piece of music that I've written the way these guys do. There's probably guys that can play us under the table, but when we're together as a band, it really is like a very very special thing. Yeah, I it's magic. Would. It is magic. He's right about that. That's pro that that's probably. A good part of the reason why we've been together so long. I mean, cause, you know, we're just we're human beings like everyone else, and we fight, whatever. But like when it when the day ends, it's all about the music, you know. And if nothing else, that's probably that's a glue, you know. Yeah, it's about the glue, it's probably the music. Now that we've heard all about the What Up Funk band, let's see what they do best. Let's head on up to the upper room with Joe Kelly concert stage and we'll hear songs from the CD Soul Funkful performed live by the What Up Funk Band. So Funkful, one, two, three. So, so Funkful music.
in our mind Say. To get you in the mood To get so fun for tonight So fun for music How our past was so So funky It's the way to go It's the way to go So fun for music Makes you feel all right